So many people who have lived here for years just aren't able to afford to live here anymore. Unfortunately, instead of addressing these issues, Governor DeSantis and the Republicans in the Florida legislature have chosen to give tax cuts to corporations and wage culture wars. But Floridians, but to Floridians who are struggling to make these meets, ends meet, know that you have at least one ally in Tallahassee. As your Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services, and with my department overseeing fuel quality in the state of Florida, I'm taking action to help alleviate pain at the pump. Gas prices have been rising as a result of Russia's war on Ukraine and continued supply chain issues caused by global pandemic. That is why our department issued an emergency rule to help increase our state supply of gasoline products. This rule allows Florida suppliers to utilize additional fuel types to secure a consistent and affordable supply of gas. Technically speaking, federal standards for fuel blends contain gasoline between 9 and 15 percent of ethanol, which is called E15, has been temporarily lifted. This will allow gasoline retailers to sell the blend typically used in the winter during the summer months, which aids to help increase our fuel supplies and give consumers more choice to get lower prices. We modeled our rule on a waiver issued by the Biden administration and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, which paved the way for states like ours to take action, allowing the continued use of the E15. At the current price, E15 can save a family 10 cents per gallon on gas on average, and many stores sell E15 at the general greater discount, which can help add up to real savings for many of our Florida families. It will also reduce our dependency on foreign oil, which I have been strongly advocating for. I've even introduced a clean energy plan for our state that would get us to 100% renewable by 2050. But once again, Republicans in Tallahassee refused to even hold one hearing on that bill. My office has continued to crack down on gas skimmers and other criminals who take advantage of Floridians at the pump. We are also working to ensure that fuel pumps are accurately calibrated so the consumers are getting exactly what they are paying for. We need to do everything we can to help Florida save money and to make sure that our Floridians that are living here in our state can still have a quality way of life and to make sure that we are lowering the cost of living here in our state. And this is one way that my department can help to do that while, help, while Tallahassee Republicans continue to turn a blind eye to the unaffordable costs of living here in our state, which is impacting Florida families across it. Thank you for being here today and to the consumers across our state know that this is just one of our tools that we're gonna to continue to use to help our Florida families. So thank you for your time and I will take questions. When does this rule go into effect? Immediately. So families will start seeing a 10% discount on the pump? So what happens is, is that you'll be able to, gas stations, if you see some of the grays of the different gas, that they'll be able to use a different summer blend, uh, which is called the E15. And so if a gas pump is using, a gas station is using the, this blend, that specific gas will be 10 cents lower than what is potentially at the pump. Yes. Do, do consumers have to rely on the, the gas stations to honor the lower costs? So what would happen is, yes, partly, but that's part of our job. We make sure that if they are actually using this E15 grade, it is cheaper. And so if they jack up the prices, that's price gouging. And so we will be making sure, along with the Attorney General, that if they're in fact using the E15 gas, that it is lower cost and that that is actually being implemented at the pumps. Can you discuss, uh, should people have any concerns using E10? I know you're not supposed to use or E15 on like small, you know, your lawnmower or stuff like that. But for the most part, safety vehicles, can you just talk to about how people shouldn't be using, worried about using E15? Well, I mean, look, E15 is used half the year. You know, so this is not something that they're not used to putting into their cars. What this is doing is because we change blends depending on the climate and to see the heat and how that reacts to the temperature. So what this is doing is just extending that time period of which we can be able to use E15 before going to complete summer blends. 
is what it is. So you're already been using this on your cars. You've already been, if you're already been doing that throughout the entire year, it's no different. So it's just releasing of the barrels. Um, and so at this point, it's us. EPA did the original waiver and allowing this to happen. And so now um, we're doing it here in the state of Florida. And, and so the barrels are already there. It's now up to the gas stations to, of course, know, go and pull those barrels and get them filled here. Can you talk about how this directly impacts, you know, Floridians, but also local businesses who are struggling, maybe those that rely on delivery services? Absolutely. I mean, the impact across the entire supply chain. I mean, I'm hearing that from agriculture that we're seeing increase in cost of agriculture production because of transportation costs, which is seeing the increase of because of the gas tax, because of gas. And so if you're able to reduce the cost of gas, the, the trickle down impact is gonna be on, on consumer products like food. So EPA only has jurisdiction to do it every 20 days. Um, and so it went into effect May 1st from the EPA, and so it's up until May 20th. Um, there is conversations about extending it another 20 days. Um, our rule kind of coincides with the EPA's, and so we have said that we will, in essence, if the continuation happens from the EPA side, uh, whenever their waiver expires, our waiver will expire with it. But if there was an extension, we extend with it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.